Hi everybody, it's Mr. Gerhardt again, and we're here to talk about evaluating and graphing polynomial functions. Um, we're just going to introduce how we graph uh, these polynomial functions and just talk about some of the characteristics involved, and we'll get more detail as the unit goes on. Um, all polynomial graphs are both smooth and continuous. Smooth, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. There's no sharp angles or turns in the graph. Continuous means it's one single line. You don't pick up your pen at any point, um, like in a piecewise function. Uh, and so you're just really drawing a smooth and continuous graph, very curvy, and um, it looks like this. This right here is a cubic polynomial. This is a quartic polynomial, and these are just two examples of the types of graphs that we're going to be making in this unit. Now, um, when we get into different types of polynomials, we're going to explain um, that they're all of this form right here. f of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 a sub 1 x plus a sub 0. This is just mathematical jargon for really just making sure that we have two different things. One, real number coefficients and two, whole number or non-negative integer in the math world exponents. Um, basically as long as the coefficient of a term is real meaning not i, and the exponents are whole numbers, meaning 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to infinity, um, we're good to go. Uh, if we have fraction exponents, radical exponents, um, imaginary coefficients, those are not polynomials. But anything else in terms of what we're dealing with um, are all polynomials. And these are just some of the different types. <clears throat> we categorize them based on their degree, which is the highest exponent. So if the degree is 0, meaning it's like y equals 2, in this case it's y equals 3, you can see how this is just a straight horizontal line. If it's linear, like 2x minus 3, you can see that this right here would be the line. It's a straight line, smooth, continuous, no change, um, and, and that's a linear function or a linear polynomial. Quadratics we talked about in the last unit. They look like parabolas. They have a degree of 2 because 2 is the highest exponent. And then it gets more exciting the more degrees that you have. Degree of 3 is a cubic polynomial. Looking like this, it's going to have multiple curves. And then <clears throat> a quartic is a fourth degree polynomial where the highest exponent is 4. And the graphs will look more like this. Now, as with anything else, in order to graph these functions, we need to know a little bit about the graph, and we plug in points. Plugging in points, we need to substitute in values. We're going to talk about how to do that next. As we get into these um, characteristics, one big thing is the end behavior. What's happening at the end of polynomials? Um, and there's an end behavior polynomial test, or a leading coefficient test, as we talk about it in pre-calculus. And really, it depends on two things. It depends on if the degree is odd or even, and it depends on if the leading coefficient is positive or negative. If the degree is odd, then we're going to focus on these two types of graph. One end is going up, and the other end is going down. Um, if it's a positive leading coefficient, it has very close to a positive slope or what could be equated as a positive slope. So if I were to draw a positive slope line, I'm going up to the right and down to the left. This notation here, read f of x is going to positive infinity as x goes to positive infinity, is describing the end behavior. So as we go to the right, where x is going to positive infinity, f of x, or our y values, are also going up. Same thing over here, f of x is going to negative infinity, as x goes to negative infinity, describing this end behavior. If the leading coefficient were negative, then it would be like having a negative slope. And so this is going to go down to the right and up to the left, or something like this drawing. Okay, And we change up then what f of x and x are doing as we improve. Now, even degree polynomials either both go up or both go down both go up if the leading coefficient is positive. This would be like x squared, like y equals 2x squared. 2x squared means the graph opens up. If we were to change it and say y equals negative 2x squared, now my leading coefficient is negative, and so the graph would open down. 
Same idea here. The hardest part about this lesson or about this topic is getting the notation correct, and we're going to work through that um, as we go through. Okay, so here's a couple example problems. f of x equals 5x to the third plus 3x squared minus x plus 7. First two things we want to identify are, one, what's the degree, and what's the leading coefficient. In this case, the degree is 3 because that's the highest exponent. So we're going to say degree 3. We're going to say leading coefficient of 5, which is positive. This is odd. So if I go back to the chart that I had, which is also in your book, I'm going to look and I'm going to say, hmm, odd degree, positive leading coefficient. That's this right here. Okay, and so I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to say f of x is going to blank as x goes to negative infinity. Well, if it's an odd degree and <clears throat> it's falling to the left, then I'm going to say f of x goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. If I'm looking at the graph and I'm saying, okay, well, it's looking something like this. x is going to positive infinity. What's happening to the y values? We're going up. So that's also going to be positive infinity, okay? Over here, when we look, the degree of this polynomial, g of x, is 4. It's the highest exponent right here. The leading coefficient is negative 2, and so that's negative. So we've got a negative leading coefficient, an even polynomial. And so now all I'm thinking is negative leading coefficient, even polynomial. It's kind of like a parabola that opens down, which means that f of x is going to negative infinity both as x goes to negative infinity and f of x is going to negative infinity as x goes to positive infinity because both ends are going down as we go to the right and the left. And so this is how we describe the end behavior of a polynomial. Now, as I was saying, the last part is how do we find points? And obviously, you can find points on your graph using the table and so on and so forth. But believe it or not, there was a time before calculators and people had to do things by hand. And so this is how we're going to go and do direct substitution and synthetic substitution. Synthetic substitution is pretty cool, too. So let's try f of negative 2. Most of you could probably do this directly by substituting in the negative 2. Say negative 2 to the 4th plus 2 times negative 2 to the 3rd plus 3 times negative 2 squared minus 7. We follow order of operations, so the first thing we're going to do is exponents. Negative 2 to the 4th is 16 plus 2. Negative 2 to the 3rd is just negative 8 plus 3. Negative 2 squared is just 4 minus 7. Now we do the multiplication part. So we have 16 minus 16 plus 12 minus 7. 16 minus 16 is 0, plus 12 is 12, minus 7 is 5. Now, that's direct substitution. That's kind of boring. That's the usual old way. To do synthetic substitution, we simply put in the number that we're um, substituting in, and then we write down the coefficients. And if you notice right here, we don't have an x term, so we're going to call it 0x. So I'm going to write down the coefficients 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 7. I threw that 0 in there because we were missing the x term. Now, this is pretty cool. We skip a line on our paper and draw a line, and then we bring down the first number, 1. Now, the method goes negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and then we add down. Now, 2 and negative 2 is 0. Multiply up, 0. Add down, 3. Multiply up, negative 6. Add down, negative 6. Multiply up, negative 2 times negative 6 is 12, negative 7 plus 12 is 5. And look at that. The last number that you get is the same as what you would have gotten if you would have done direct substitution. So let's do one more here. We're going to plug in 4. We're going to say 4 to the third minus 5 times 4 squared plus 6 times 4 plus 1. First thing we're going to do is exponents. 4 to the third is 64 minus 5 times 4 squared, which is 16, plus 6 times 4, plus 1. Multiply. 
64 minus, I think, let's see, 50, 80 plus 24 plus 1. Scroll down just a tad. And then let's see, 64 minus 80, that's negative 16, plus 24 is 8, plus 1 is 9. We can now check by doing synthetic substitution. 4 goes in the box, and then we're going to write down our coefficients. 1, negative 5, 6, 1. We didn't add a 0 because we weren't missing any terms. Bring down the 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 6 plus negative 4 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9. And there's our method. Now, we don't have to do direct and synthetic substitution every time we do a substitution. Um, it's just two different methods. And sometimes it's easier to do one. Sometimes it's easier to do the other. Some people like direct substitution. Some people like synthetic substitution. But we'll use that to find values of polynomials, plot those points, and then draw smooth, continuous graphs. So I hope you learned a little bit of something about synthetic and direct substitution, as well as graphing polynomials. And we'll talk to you later.